There you go. If you have your Bibles again, open them up to Psalm 78. Psalm 78. And it's a blessing to be here at Temple Baptist this morning. And my services, they're already done in Indiana. So you come to our church and get out early. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're on Eastern time. So service started in, uh, an hour ago. Uh, let's say two hours ago, service started. And service has been over for a while. But it's good to see so many familiar faces. And if you don't know... and try to be a blessing to you this morning and preach on the purpose of Christian education. Uh, the purpose of uh, Christian education, we'll see in verse 7 in just a moment. You know, verse 5, uh, we're commanded to make known unto our children uh, the law of God. It's a command, and as a father, now have three children, uh, we have Carson and Carly is uh, almost six. Carson is almost four. He's a little sick today. And then we have baby Cohen, and none of y'all here have met Cohen yet. Uh, he was eight months yesterday, and, uh, and it's hard to believe that I have three children, but God has given me a command uh, to raise them and to give them an education. And so this morning, I'm not going to just be uh, teaching and preaching on a Christian school, which I believe in and I think is important, but really want to hope and help uh, you as a father and a mother this morning to remind you, you have been commanded to teach some things to your children. Yeah. You say, well, I'm not a parent. Well, I'm a grandparent. Well, uh, you can pray for your children, and some of you grandparents are raising your children as well. And it's a good reminder of some things from God's Word this morning. What do I teach? On well, the book of Exodus, in chapter 10, verse 2, it says that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. What did Moses say? What did God tell the children of Israel to teach? He said, teach them what God has done for you. There's nobody here this morning that could not say, God's never done anything for me. Right. Not one young person can say, God has never done anything for me. God has done something for all of us this morning. And what are we commanded to teach? To teach them how good God is. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at the verses this morning and try to show you some things. Look at verse number 1 again. It says, Give ear, O my people, to my law, and find thine ears to the words of my mouth. What's he saying? Hey, uh, don't touch the dial. And that's not even phrase we use anymore. Uh, <laughs> don't touch the dial. Some of you remember. Y'all remember being, there was no remote. You were the remote. How many of y'all remember being the remote? That's a little bit but before my, I'm not as old as you, Dan. I don't remember that. Uh, that's before my time. Uh, but don't touch the dial. God's saying, listen up. This is important. Don't take your attention off of what I'm about to tell you. Listen, listen, give ear, oh my people, to what I'm about to tell you. What do we teach our children? Number one, we teach our children how good and how great God is. Amen. How great God is. He said, listen, verse number two, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has Done. There are some things that God has done that he is uh, worthy of praise for. Amen. What did he do for the children of Israel? Well, he delivered them from Egypt. Amen. Egypt is a picture in the Bible of sin and of bondage. And before Christ Jesus came into my heart, before I trusted him as my Savior, I was enslaved to sin. I was in bondage. And God set me free Amen. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's something to praise God for. What do I teach my children? Teach them that God delivered them from sin. And God gave them salvation. It's a praiseworthy deed of our God. Hey, we should look for ways to praise God. It shouldn't take very long. It shouldn't be very hard. What's God done? Well, I just told you He saved us. If you're saved this morning, that's something you can praise God for. We're all here. We're all alive. Some of you may have a, uh, some. Uh, many of you may have less toes. I, I don't think anybody's had toes amputated. Uh, I say that in our church, we just had a man amputate us uh, some toes. And 
Uh, he's very uh, uh, joking about it, trying to have a good sense of humor. And I say, God's been good. We're all still here. And he'll say, Pastor, I don't have all my toes, but I am still here. Uh, you know what? We can thank God that we're still alive this morning. We still have a heart uh, beat. We still have breath. God has given that to us. Hey, he provided for the children of Israel in the wilderness. What do we praise God for? Well, He delivered you from sin. He's provided for you. He gave them food. He gave them manna. He gave them water. Uh, he gave them uh, the quail. Even when they complained, God provided. He didn't only provide. He guided them in the wilderness. Uh, and God still guides us. He's given us the Holy Spirit uh, to guide us. He's given us His Word to be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Man, the children of Israel had a cloud of uh, fire by night. And he had a pillar of cloud, a smoke by day. Guiding them, showing them where to go. Right. Also as an air conditioner and heater in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Pretty good. Man, I'm so thankful for air conditioning. No other thing to praise God for is air conditioning. Now I live in the north. I have to thank God for heater. It's cold on there. I praise God for, for heat. But God guides us. He also brought them to the promised land. That's something we can praise God for. He's brought them. Uh, he kept His word. Aren't you thankful that you can say this morning that God keeps His word? That's something you can praise God for. And that's something you should teach your children to praise God for. He's delivered us. He's provided for us. He's guided us. He has kept His promises. The sad thing is the children of Israel rebelled against God at Kadesh Barnea. He provided and brought them, and they said, God, we don't want your will for our life. They rejected God. And let's not have that said about us this morning. We have a responsibility to teach the next generation how to praise God and to remind them how great God really is. Hey, we need to teach them how to praise God in their prayer life. In prayer, we should spend a lot of time praying, praising God for how good He is. Praising God for deliverance and protection and provision and guidance in our life. And whose responsibility is that to teach your children? Your responsibility. As a parent, you have been commanded by God to educate your children on how great God is. Not only does he have some praiseworthy things, we should praise God for his strength. It says there in verse number four, uh, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength. May God is an awesome God. Yeah. The same God that delivered the Israelites, the same God that parted the Red Sea, the same God that defeated the, the Egyptian army is the same God we serve today. And he's just as powerful as he was thousands of years ago. He's not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What do we teach our children? God is great, and he is praiseworthy, and he is powerful. And he's powerful. Is there anything too hard for God? No, absolutely not. Uh, the Bible answers that same question, the same passage. Nothing is too hard for thee. We praise God for his power. We also praise God for the wonders that he's done in verse 4. And his wonderful works that he hath done. You know, we serve a God that is a, a wonderful God. Amen. We serve a God that does things that we cannot really explain. Right. Man, God has blessed our church there in Hartford City, a small town in Indiana. And honestly, I step back and say, you know what? It's all God. Amen. You know, God has brought people of the Temple Baptist Church that I've never seen before. And I can step back and say, Pastor, that's a wonderful thing Amen. that God has done. Amen. God has brought, and God knew exactly who was going to be here today. God is a wonderful God. It's our responsibility, though, to teach our children. You're in the book of Psalms. Why don't you turn to Psalms 143? Hold your finger in Psalm 78. I want you to look at something in Psalm 143. And uh, don't be too worried about lunch, okay? I only preach an hour. I'm a little bit longer than I used to be. No, I'm hungry too. That's all right. I, uh, you know I won't preach too long. I'm, I'm hungry. I walked into the team building and it smelled like poor, poor barbecue sandwiches over there. And I said, oh my goodness, it's time to just go home and go eat. Just like your dad. I am. Um, <laughs> in more ways than one, more ways than one. Psalm 143, though, verse number 3, the Bible says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And His greatness is unsearchable. You can never really comprehend and wrap your mind around how great God is. Psalm 143, verse 4, says, One generation shall praise thy works to another. It is the generation of a father and a mother's responsibility 
to show and praise God's works to the generation following, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor and of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Again, it's one generation's job and responsibility to show and praise God to the other generation. Declare there means to, to teach. Hey, do you really believe that God can do anything? Yeah. I can talk that to your children. Hey, listen, child, you can trust God. God has done all this work in my life. God is a great God. Amen. And you can teach your children to praise God. Amen. Praise God. Do your children know, uh, do they see your faith? Do they actually believe what you're saying? Or is it just something they see on the weekend and, and not at home? Mm. It's our responsibility, mom and dad, to teach, give, and provide a Christian education. What is that education doing? It's saying God is great. Mm -hmm. And he's done some wonderful things, some powerful things, some <laughs> praiseworthy things. Number two, it's our responsibility, uh, the purpose of Christian education is not only to teach that God is great, but to teach God's word. Yeah. Look in verse number five again of our text verse, Psalm 78 verse five. It says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. God has established his testimony. And this morning, you have it in your hand, you have it in your lap. We have the testimony of God, the words of God, the law of God there for us, uh, for all of us to read. And it's our responsibility to teach that to the next generation. In the maze of, of moral confusion, what's right and what's wrong in society today, it's all over the place and it's constantly changing. But the word of God abideth forever. It's like God, it's, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have a responsibility to teach to the generations before us Amen. and following us. Ephesians 6, 4, and you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. It is my responsibility to teach the children that God's given to me and my wife the word of God. Sometimes, though, our own lack of knowledge and understanding hinders us. But sometimes we need to be reminded the teacher learns more than the student. Amen. Man, when you get to teaching your children and, and having a time that you sit down and start teaching the, the, the Word of God, I'm glad for Sunday school classes, and I'm glad for junior churches, and I'm thankful for a Christian school. But let me tell you, that should not replace the Word of God being taught to your children right. by the parents. Amen. God gave that responsibility to you, Mom and Dad, to teach the Word of God. You say, well, I, I don't know. Well, you'll learn a lot more by teaching than you ever did by sitting in a view. And I've learned a whole lot more of God's Word since I had to preach five, six, seven times a week. I've learned more. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know enough. And uh, I, don't, I, I don't have enough knowledge in the Word of God. It's important for us to remember that you'll never know everything. If, if nobody taught until they reached a certain level, we wouldn't have any qualified teachers here this morning. Teach the Word of God. Sometimes we say, well, I don't have enough time. That's not true. Right. You say, well, it's a busier day today. It's not busier. We're just more distracted today than we've ever been. Right. The average American spends two hours a day on social media. And we say, I don't have time to teach my children the Word of God. You do if you put your cell phone down. Yeah. You say, well, man, that's rough stuff. No, I'm preaching to me there, too. My yeah. wife's amen in the nursery. She's saying, amen, <laughs> preacher. Turn your phone off. Tear them down and put it on the table. Uh, we, we, we're distracted. It's March Madness. We're all distracted. Yeah. And uh, Brother Tyler, if we'd have had church today, if Kentucky Wolford was playing today, he wouldn't be here. <laughs> we're distracted by all that's going on. And we say, I don't have enough time. You have enough time for what's important. You have enough time to watch your favorite team on the football during the football season. And I do too. The Broncos are on. I make time. I try to find out what channel they're on. Why? It's important to me. Hey, with the Word of God teaching my children the responsibility God has given me is far more important than any football, any social media, any article that I can read on the internet. We have the time. We're just too distracted. Hey, why not share with each other what you're learning in God's Word with the family together? Have your children tell you what they learn in Sunday school. Amen. It will remind them, it will excite them, and it will help uh, uh, implant the Word of God that was taught to them. 
Biblical instruction, though, should not just begin at church. It begins at home. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm going to have you turn. This will be the last passage I'll have you turn to. Keep your finger in Psalm 78 because we'll be right back. But I want you to look at something in Deuteronomy chapter 6. How? I, oh, Pastor, or Brother Johnny, I, there's no way. I have no knowledge of the Bible. I don't have enough time for the, uh, to, uh, to teach the Bible to my children. Well, Christian education is far beyond typical Christian academy. It's important that it's happening in the home. Yeah. When you teach how great God is. Praise God for what He's done. How powerful He is. His, uh, His wonders that He's done. And it's your responsibility to teach the Word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 9. And I'll read uh, verse 4. I'll read down through verse 9. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto who? To thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine head. And they shall be for, as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt wipe them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. And uh, devotion time at home is very important. I would encourage you to have a devotion time and to study and talk about God's Word. But you know one of the greatest things you can do as a mom and a dad is you can spend time with your children. The Bible says when thou risest, when thou walkest, whenever you lie down, what are you doing? You're talking about the Word of God and teaching your children. You know, your children are going to learn a whole lot more from your dad when they're out in the garage with you, spending time with you. Uh, Mom, you're going to do a lot better, bigger impact in their life when you're teaching them the Word of God. When you're baking cookies, praise the Lord for cookies. <laughs> Whatever you do, and you say, well, this is my hobby. Well, bring your kid along and talk to them about the Bible when you're doing it. Amen. Spend time with your children. Man, the best part of learning experience will come from being with your children. Make time. The Bible says, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child on it the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's not necessarily a prophecy, meaning if you do right, your children will always turn out right. And I can show you a lot of children that are prodigal, uh, prodigal sons that have gone wayward and have forsaken God and their parents and everything that they were supposed to and tried. What it's saying is you're going to have a whole lot better shot when you're teaching and training up your children in the Word of God. Use daily experiences to teach principles and Bible principles. And when you're riding in the car, don't just, uh, don't just turn on their songs or let them watch the DVD player. Don't talk about church. Talk about what they learn. Talk about the Word of God. Why? It's your responsibility. The purpose of Christian education is to teach how great God is, to teach God's Word to our children. Number three, we must teach our children to trust God, to trust God. Verse number 7 of our text in Psalm 78, it says that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. But how can we teach our children to trust God? Amen. By teaching them to praise God and read God's Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. How in the world, the Bible says that they, they, they forgot how in the world, it says, and not forget the works of God. How can the children of Israel forget God's works? God works today, and he still does. But man, a lot of the children of Israel had God there, present. They could see, them with, see him with their eyes, and they forgot God. Why? Because one generation dropped the ball and neglected to teach the next generation. The Bible says at the end of Judges that they, they, everybody did that which was right in their own eyes. Why? Because there was nobody teaching their children. Listen, this is what God's Word says. It does not take long for a society to forsake God. All it takes is for one generation to neglect the responsibility of parenting that God has given to us. <clears throat> what are we seeing today? The results of a generation neglecting their responsibility to Amen. teach the Word of God to their children. That's why we see the problems we have in today's society. It's because they have neglected God and neglected their responsibility. They got too busy. And we do the same thing. When God parted the Jordan River, He said, take 12 stones out and set this up as a memorial so that people will come by and say, what is this? This was God bringing us into the promised land. We need to constantly commemorate and honor and remember the mighty works that God has done in our lives. I want to teach my children that they can trust God. 
I don't want them to forget what God's done in my life. I want to teach them that they can trust God. Well, what about the bad things? Well, Romans 8, 28. Uh, God worketh all things to good for them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. It never says in that verse that God works all things good, and God does everything, and everything feels good. No, it says that God works out. All things will become good in God's plan. And I have to teach my children, you can trust God. I had a, a family member of my wife. Uh, his, his mother passed away. My wife's brother-in-law. And his, her name was Chris. It was funerals in Toledo a few months ago. And uh, Chris was uh, a young woman still. She was barely, I think she was 60 or 61. And I uh, had many children, I think 10 children. And, and the whole auditorium, uh, uh, auditorium seating 1,200 was just almost completely filled. And this lady had made a major impact in her community and her church. And her sister got up behind the pulpit and said some words about it. They called her Chris. And they said she died of cancer. They said She said cancer was good for my sister. And I, I'm a pastor, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, what in the world is this lady saying? <laughs> cancer was good for my sister. She wanted to explain. She said there were some problems in their family, some people that were not talking to one another. And God believed and God knew that Chris was the only one strong enough to handle the cancer but bring everybody back together again. Amen. And through that lady's cancer and her death, the family was closer and more united than they'd ever been before. And things were mended, some relationships that were broken. You know what? That's a responsibility as a dad to say, teach my children, hey, you know what? You can trust God. You may hurt right now. It may be dark right now. There may be a storm going on in your life right now. But we serve a mighty God. He's done some wonderful things. He's done some praiseworthy things. We serve a strong, powerful, almighty God. And you can trust Him. Amen. If you don't teach them that, they're going to forget God. That's right. It's our responsibility to teach them. Show them how to live. Show them to trust God. And then number four, show them and teach them the purpose of Christian education is to teach them to obey God. Right. It's not just enough to know about God and to trust God, but I've got to do what God's asked me to do, to obey Him. In verse number seven of our text, it says, And forget not the works of God, but keep His commandments. We're supposed to obey God. And we need to teach our children why they should obey God. The story of Joseph is, is one, of, uh, one of the craziest stories in all the Bible to me. How Joseph can be just uh, totally forsaken by his brethren and sold as a slave. And, and then forsaken by Potiphar and lied about and put in prison and forgotten about. Man, Joseph's life is just a mess. But when Joseph was in Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife came to him and, and tried to seduce him, in Genesis 39, 9, it says, How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? How did Joseph know it was wicked for him to, to, to lay with Potiphar's wife? He'd been taught to obey God. Amen. Now, I don't know in the Bible exactly when Jacob took Joseph aside and said, Joseph, uh, these, are God's, uh, these are God's laws, and this is God's commandments, and, and you better obey exactly what God's asked you to do. I, I don't know where that happened, but I know that somewhere in Joseph's life, he realized and was taught how to live and obey God's commands. Joseph did right. He made the right decision. Joseph was taught right. We have to teach our children by example. Hey, when the phone rings and your child picks up the phone, and again, there's not many house phones anymore. I said, don't touch the dial when I'm talking about a house phone. Is it, how many of y'all still have a house phone at home? Oh, man, a lot. Four. Okay. All right. Y'all imagine that every one of you had a house phone today, okay? And the phone rings and your child picks it up. And we were taught how to answer the phone. Oh, this is the Crane's house. How may I help you? And they say, is your dad there? And you look over at your dad. Your dad's. <laughs> no. No. I'm not saying my dad, my dad never did that. <laughs> How can you tell your children, hey, don't lie, and you tell them, hey, don't let them know I'm here? Right. It doesn't work. That's right. it, it, it does not work. We have to teach consistency the best model. Joshua said, it's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. I'm going to show you what's right. Eventually, you're going to have to grow up and make your own responsibility, but you need to learn to obey God. And we don't like that word, obey. Man, I remember singing a song, Obedience is the very best way. I remember that song, to show that you believe. Why? Because it's doing what God's asked us to do. God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I think one of the greatest faults in our generation
generation, our churches uh, in the last several years, is we've taught our children to obey, but we've not taught our children why we should obey. I obey because I love God. And God's done everything for me. God has delivered me. God has done all this mighty works in my life. And God has given me His Word. Man, God has given me guidance and helped me. The least I can do is, God, whatever you want from me, I'll do it. That's my responsibility to my children. Hey, is the proper motivation for obedience is love. I should show them how to live. Show them uh, to seek forgiveness when they mess up. That's, that's obedience to God is asking for forgiveness. I should show my children how uh, a husband should love their wife. I should show my children what it's like and what it looks like to be a good worker and be a good employer. By my example. I should teach. The purpose of Christian education is to teach our children to obey God. Number five, and I'm done. The purpose, the ultimate purpose of education we find in verse number seven. All these four things are in your text. But number seven, it just stuck out to me so uh, several months ago. God put this on my heart for you this morning. It says that they might set their hope in God. You know, the, the reason why we have a Christian school at Temple Christian Academy, the reason why God has commanded mothers and fathers to educate their children is because they need to learn that there's hope. Right. You know, the world today is filled with people that have lost hope. There's politicians today that are saying, don't have children because the society has gotten so bad and the climates are so, uh, so devastating. All this stuff, well, guess what? They have no hope. I give my children a Christian education, teach them the Word of God, that they can trust God, that God is powerful, that God is strong, and God made some promises. He said, seed time and harvest will never cease. It's a promise of God. I teach my children that. What does it do? It gives them hope. The world will say, oh, you're filling them with fairy tales, making them sleep good at night. No, I'm giving them hope in God. Giving them hope that they might set their hope in Him. I don't want my children to trust and put their hope in man. Man will fall and mess up. Man's going to let them down. I'm not teaching my children to set their hope in a government. No, I'm teaching them to set their hope in God. I'm not teaching my children to set their hope in a humanistic ideology. No, I'm teaching them to set their hope in Jesus Christ. What? Why? That's the only place hope's found. Right. Nowhere else you'll find hope like you find in Jesus Christ. And that's why you give your children a Christian education. Whether it's placing them in the school, which I think would be an unbelievable experience. I thank God for Temple Christian Academy in my life. But parents, it's your responsibility at your home to teach them and give them a Christian education. Every one of them. Why? Because they need to know that there's hope. There's only hope in one place. It's not found in the world. It's not found in forsaking God. It's not found in the bars and the taverns. It's found in God and Jesus Christ. That's it. Giving them hope. And then there's a second reason, verse number eight. Why? Why do this? Why spend all this time, energy, educating, and giving your children uh, the word of God and training them? Because it gives them hope, but then it also helps keep back rebellion. Look at verse number eight. And might not be as their father's. A stubborn and rebellious generation. Many times in the Old Testament, the Bible describes the Israelites as being a stiff-necked people. And he, he, you could almost put Johnny Crane in that verse. Man, a stubborn and rebellious, a stiff-necked person. But when you give your children the education that, hey, you can trust God, follow God's word, obey God's word, believe in God's word, it helps keep back rebellion. Right. You know what rebellion leads to? The Bible says rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, and it, it leads to destruction. Yes. The Bible says in the book of James, that sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Yeah. Young people, I wish that every teenager in America would realize and understand the results of rebellion and the results of sin is destruction. Yeah. I've seen it so many times. I'm still a young man. I just turned 29 on Thursday. Uh, but I've been in uh, church work now. It's been 10 years ago uh, this summer that y'all hired me as a, as a staff member at Temple Baptist Church. <laughs> and in those 10 years, uh, eight here and two in Indiana, I have seen so many people say, I'm going to do what I want to do, and I will not have the results that you're telling me I'm going to get. I'm going to rebel against God, and, and my life's going to be okay. 
I'm going to rebel against God's word, and I'm not going to have any consequences for it. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. But rebellion is natural. Rebellion is just a natural progression of our flesh. And if you don't teach your children how good God is and how great God is, and then teach and train them in the word of God, they will naturally rebel against the things of God. That's why in the book of Judges, every time that a judge would die, they would just naturally fall back into serving and worshiping false gods. I want my children like Peter. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 67, Jesus makes a very bold statement, and hundreds and thousands of people leave him. He, he basically said, I am the Son of God. And they, they left. He looked at his disciples, and he said, will you also go away? And Peter said something that just is unbelievable, verse 68. It says, Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Hey. If nothing else in my life, I don't accomplish anything else. I want my children, Carly, Carson, and Cohen, one day to say, no, I don't want the world. I don't want to rebel against God. Where else, where else could we go? <clears throat> where else could we go? You, you have the words to eternal life. You know, parent, that's your responsibility is to teach and train them. Teach them rebellion is not going to satisfy. Only the word of God. The most important thing you can ever teach your children is trusting and believing God, but believing that He can save them. Amen. Why? Amen. Because they need salvation. Yes. They are lost and they're in their condition of sin, and the fact that they have transgressed God's law, they, like you, deserve to go to a place called hell. That's right. That's what we deserve. But God, in His love, committed and proved His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want to teach my children, you've sinned, you've transgressed and broken God's law. You deserve death, you deserve hell, but God loves you and sent His Son to take your place. It's the most important thing you can teach. Before you can teach that, that's something you have to know. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ. You, never, you do not know Him as your personal Savior. Before you can give a Christian education to your children, you have to become a Christian. You have to trust Christ as your Savior. And that's the most important decision you can make today. The second decision you can make, if you've already trusted Christ, you can say, uh, I'm going to teach and I'm going to give my children a Christian education. Herald the world, herald the devil, they can do what they want to do, but I'm going to train my children in the way that God wants us and commanded us to train them. Why? Because you want them to have hope. You want them to not rebel against the, the things of God and for God to bless their life. I don't know about you. I want my children to have a good life. Yeah. And you know, to be honest, sometimes to a fault, we, 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 we live that way. We try to shelter and say, I'm not going to let my children do this. And I'm not going to let them fail. I'm going to give all the kids a trophy because I don't want them to know what it's like to lose. No, that's, that's not what we're talking about this morning. We're telling them to trust God, obey God, Believe in God. Yeah. Why? Because look what he's done in my life. And he can do that in yours too. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about my life because I'm a great person. No, I'm not. I have fell, fell, fell here and I messed up and I'm not a perfect man. And nobody up here can preach a sermon because of how good of a parent they are. We can stand on the word of God and say, look, there's a reason, there's a purpose to Christian education. It's to give our children hope and to, to, to try to stop the rebellious attitude that naturally comes to human kind, human flesh. But this morning, again, the greatest thing you can teach them is to trust in Jesus Christ for their personal Savior. Amen. I'm going to have every head bowed and eyes closed. I'm going to say a word of prayer, and I'm going to turn over to Pat.